Hello. I welcome you all for this online online lecture program. Today we shall discuss about the spectroscopy of organic compounds and its applications in organic chemistry. The third semester second semester organic chemistry syllabus has many topics under this heading namely spectroscopy of organic compounds and its applications in organic chemistry before going into the spectroscopy of organic compounds and its applications let us learn a few fundamentals of the spectroscopy and the theory behind the the method namely spectroscopy first of all let us try to understand the term namely energy what is the meaning of this term energy we all know that energy is a basic requirement for the normal functioning of anything be the human beings be a vehicle be a electrical instrument energy is the basic requirement if we eat food we get some energy because of that energy we are able to work and perform our day to day activities if you want to use a vehicle then you are putting a fuel hydrocarbon fuel or electricity operated vehicle means we are giving electric current then only the vehicle you can be operated for the operation of electrical instruments domestic as well as industrial we require electric current if we don't have electric current we make use of hydrocarbon fuels put them in a generator generator produces a current so the energy the term is a basic requirement for the normal activities of anything for the functioning of anything anything see in chemistry we come across this term namely energy in various fields we use this term we study about this term we derive lot of expressions based on this term in thermodynamics as well as in quantum mechanics in thermodynamics we have the energy related terms namely enthalpy internal energy gibbs free energy so these are some of the terms connected with our energy and we have various uh, laws we derive lot of expressions based on energy so the term is highly associated with chemistry in thermodynamics apart from this in quantum mechanics also we have the various laws and equations derived from energy see we remember one of the popular equations that is the popular law in thermodynamics is energy can neither be created nor be destroyed but one form of energy can be converted into another form this is from our thermodynamics so energy can be produced from something so the same thing is also revealed by this law energy can be produced by the destruction of mass that law is called as the einstein's equation so we have the relationship namely einstein's mass energy relationship e is equal to mc square at the same time we have another equation that is planck's equation the planck's equation is giving the is is the is having the expression e is equal to h nu energy is related with the planck's constant h and nu is the frequency sometimes f is also used as the symbol f frequency or nu frequency is the symbol see here planck speaks about the quantization of energy he 
says that energy is in the form of a wave and energy is given in the form of quantas so e is equal to hd o that is one quanta it depends on the frequency new one one quanta new two another quanta so energy is related with a term e is equal to mc square which depends on the mass that means energy is in the form of particle mass energy e is equal to hd u energy is in the form of wave and we study by relating these two equations only we study about the wave particle dualism in our quantum mechanics so based on this we arrive at the concept of energy that it is coming out of a material and we call that material as harmonic oscillator in quantum mechanics <clears throat> any harmonic oscillator is able to produce energy see the first known form of energy is our sunlight or white light the white light is a form of energy and we have the various light bulbs in the light bulbs we have a heating a electrically heated filament and the uh, upon electrical heating the filament emits energy the energy emitted by the harmonic oscillator is called as a radiation so the radiation has a electric and magnetic vector or we can say the radiation has electric and magnetic properties because of that only the material is emitting uh, electromagnetic ra ra radiation so the radiation is called by this term namely electromagnetic radiation see energy is also called as electromagnetic radiation and we all know that the energy is existing in different forms light that is a form of energy heat that is a form of energy electric current that is a form of energy and we have microwave ovens which are operating on microwaves we have electronic instruments like cell phone which are operating on microwaves and we have our radio frequency handsets radio wireless wireless communication system all these things are operating on radio frequencies so these are the various forms of energy what is the difference between the various forms of energy i already told you that the energy difference is made by the change in frequency when new changes into new one new two new three like that quantization of energy so the electromagnetic radiation can be classified based on the frequency and if you classify the electromagnetic radiation based on the frequency you are having the classification and the classification is called by the word namely spectrum so the meaning of the word spectrum means it is classification based on wavelength if you classify electromagnetic radiation based on wavelength it is called as electromagnetic spectrum this is the etymology this is how the words are originating so we have the electromagnetic radiation classified based on wavelength it is called as the spectrum let us uh, let me show the uh, slide how the electromagnetic radiation is classified based on wavelength called as the electromagnetic spectrum so this is your electromagnetic spectrum see here the electromagnetic spectrum is classified based on the wavelength on left side you have your axis if you move from top to bottom then the wavelength increases if you move from the top to bottom wavelength increases here you must re recall the relationship between wavelength and frequency they are inversely related nu is proportional to 1 by lambda or nu is inversely proportional to lambda 
since mu is equal to 1 by lambda the wave length increases on moving from top to bottom the frequency increases on moving from bottom to top i can tell it in the reverse also the wave length decreases on moving from bottom to top the frequency increases on moving from the frequency increases on moving from bottom to top the wave length decreases from on moving from bottom to top so this is about the changes in the wave length or variation of wave length or frequency in electromagnetic spectrum see if you look at the top side then the lines are very narrow that means the frequency is higher the wave length the, the distance between the nodes is very small so the frequency is higher the wave length is uh, lower that means the term energy e is related with h u frequency higher means it is a high energy radiation see in the high energy side we have the gamma rays where do we get this gamma rays gamma rays are coming from our nuclear radiations nuclear isotopes are producing gamma rays when they undergo some change nuclear change nuclear fission so the gamma rays that are coming out of a nuclear isotope due to radioactivity are having high energy that is why they are able to destroy living tissues and they are used in the treatment of cancer the next radiation is our uh, x rays the energy is seems to be less when compared to gamma rays so the x rays are not harmful to living tissues that is why the x rays are uh, used in medical diagnosis especially if you want to uh, take x ray photograph of the uh, human body parts suppose if you have a fracture the fracture can be detected with the help of x rays so after gamma rays we have the x rays and after the x rays we have the ultraviolet radiation that is our uh, uh, white light we all know that if we pass a white light through a prism then the prism the white light is split into its composite color we get seven colors vgr violet indigo blue green yellow orange red these are the seven colors and the seven colors are the composite colors of white light if you mix all the colors the result is white light then how do we get this white uh, so seven colors it is because of the classification of that part of radiation white light based on wave length if there is a difference in the wave length then one particular color is obtained violet color is having the lowest wave length 400 nanometers and red color is having the maximum wave length 700 nanometers the reason for uh, we all know that the red color is uh, chosen for the uh, danger symbol if you go, if you look at the signal system then we all know that red color means the danger there is a reason for choosing red color as the danger signal because the wave length is higher and you can see the red color at a longer distance that's why the red color is chosen for the danger signal so this is the this is about the uh, ultraviolet radiation ultraviolet and visible light visible light has itself has a classification seven colors based on wave length so that is also called as the uh, electromagnetic spectrum after the visible light we have our micro waves micro waves are uh, uh, highly useful they are also uh, used in uh, domestic appliances we all know that we have the um, uh, microwave ovens they are operating on the electric by microwaves produced by the instrument they are used to for cooking food how do they cook food it is based on the energy the energy supplied by the microwaves and we have our uh, 
uh, electronic instruments like cell phone they are also operating on the micro waves next comes the radio waves the frequency of radio waves is uh, still lower the wavelength is little bit higher when compared to the micro waves in the microwave region only we have our uh, spectroscopy instruments namely nmr and uh, uh, esr that i will explain later see the radio waves are used in our communication systems the radio waves are having uh, uh, higher wavelength and lower frequency so radio communication system we used to have the uh, Uh, handsets and we have the communication system in the police department wireless communication department which are operating based on the radio waves to understand the classification of electromagnetic radiation based on the wave length i have another slide it is only to uh, uh, understand in the ec banner see in this slide to understand the magnitude of variation in terms of wave length we have a comparison with the living or a, we are we have a comparison with the matter which are known to us radio frequency waves are higher and the the the, uh, the radio frequency waves are compared with our tall buildings so next comes microwaves microwaves are in the range the wavelength is lower than radio frequency but higher than infrared spectroscopy they are of the size of human beings from uh, human beings to butterfly the microwave range is from human beings to butterfly size comparison in terms of wavelength and infrared rays are having a a lower wavelength and it is of the, the wavelength is of the size of a needle and visible radiation is of the size of our microbes and ultraviolet rays are of the size of uh, our molecules x rays are still smaller they are just like our uh, just like the size of our uh, atoms or elements where is elements and uh, the gamma rays are still smaller in terms of wavelength and uh, they are just like our subatomic particles namely neutrons protons electrons positrons like that so this uh, slide is uh, this, this slide i have chosen for you to easily understand the magnitude of wavelength in electromagnetic radiation and its classification based on the electromagnetic radiation so the classification of electromagnetic radiation based on wavelength is called as electromagnetic spectrum now what happens to the electromagnetic radiation when it is uh, irradiate when it is uh, falling on a matter we all know that if we heat in our stoves in gas stoves the matter that is kept in the vessel receives the heat energy and it gets boiled so this process is due to absorption of thermal energy water it boils at 100 degrees centigrade and the vapors become very hot heat energy is converted into uh, get heat energy from the uh, gas that is burned is converted into converted to the food and the wood gets boiled or the wood gets food gets cooked so what i want to say is there is interaction between electromagnetic radiation see we must understand the interaction between electromagnetic radiation and matter i told you that when we when there is interaction between electromagnetic radiation and matter matter receives energy from the electromagnetic radiation under what condition it happens see when there is a matching of frequency we receive we receive energy from the electromagnetic radiation and sometimes it is also called as electromagnetic interruption when we are watching 
the tv and if your mixer or grinder is operated at our home and uh, at home simultaneously then you can see some interruption in the tv signal the tv signal gets interrupted we have a blurred image or we have a noise when the mixer is running the mixer is a electrical instrument which is operating and the noise has a frequency tv is also a electrical instrument and we get the interruption because the frequency of the noise from mixer matches with the frequency of the tv signal so this interruption is due to matching of frequency and this phenomenon is called as resonance there is matching of frequency and the energy is transferred from the noise that is coming out of the mixi to the tv handset so tv set so we have the interruption so this phenomenon that is matching of frequency is called as resonance and we can understand this phenomenon namely resonance through a experiment which we have done in our higher secondary as well as in our uh, allied physics of ug classes the popular experiment namely sonometer in the sonometer you have a string of wire uh, it is uh, stretched by applying weights on one side and we have the uh, uh, metal slides so because of the movement of metal slides you can vary the tension that is given to the metal string so because of that the vibrating frequency will vary that's why you can vary the length the scale is also attached to and the tuning fork will vibrate at a particular frequency if you give a knock to the tuning fork then the tuning fork will vibrate and the frequency of the tuning fork if it matches with the frequency of vibration of the string then energy is transferred the string vibrates because of the vibration of the string only we get the music in guitar violin veena etc so sound energy is produced it also has a frequency so energy from the tuning fork or the frequency of vibration of the tuning fork is transferred to the strings when there is a frequency matching and this phenomenon is called as resonance so when there is a resonance that is frequency of matching the electromagnetic radiation is absorbed by the material there is another phenomenon the material receives electromagnetic radiation and the material after receiving the electromagnetic radiation it it sends out it emits a electromagnetic radiation the emitted electromagnetic radiation also has a frequency the frequency may is almost different in most cases it is different from the energy frequency of the radiation that is absorbed so we have two process namely absorption of electromagnetic radiation as well as emission of electromagnetic radiation okay so based on this we have two types of interactions electromagnetic radiation is absorbed and electromagnetic radiation is emitted now based on these uh, two types of process namely absorption and emission of radiation we have different techniques in organic spectroscopy the organic spectroscopy is a technique mainly designed for the structural elucidation as well as confirmation of the structure of various organic compounds see we have different techniques first one is uv visible spectroscopy the uv visible spectroscopy is used for the identification of organic compounds it operates at a uh, i can say it operates at a high wavelength and we have our 
infrared spectroscopy after uv visible spectroscopy we have yeah we have infrared spectroscopy it operates at a lower wavelength when compared to uv visible spectroscopy or high frequency and we have our micro we have our spin resonance spectroscopy which are mainly using our microwaves they have a different frequency or different wavelength so in each of these process we have absorption of electromagnetic radiation the electromagnetic radiation that is emitted by the material can also be analyzed analyzed so from this instrument we have a record how the material is absorbing the particular electromagnetic radiation and what about its intensity of absorption to what extent the electromagnetic radiation is absorbed so we have sophisticated microprocessors in this instrument everything is recorded automatically and we are getting a output in the output we get a record of the interaction of electromagnetic radiation with the chemical compound we have chosen in all these spectroscopic techniques and the output of a instrument in organic spectroscopy is called as our spectrum spectrum is a record of what is happening in the instrument namely spectroscopy spectrometer so we are getting a spectrum due to the absorption or electro uh, emission of electromagnetic radiation in these uh, techniques and uh, at last i have given you a technique namely mass spectrometry if you go through the syllabus then you will come across the term uh, we, we will you will come across a chapter on mass spectrometry also you should not call mass spectrometry as mass spectroscopy because the mass spectrometry is not based on the absorption or emission of radiation that is electromagnetic radiation it is a different technique so uh, we will see how the mass spectrometer is working and the theory and the applications of mass spectroscopy mass spectrometry also so the mass spectrometry should be called as spectrometry not spectroscopy because it is not based on the absorption or emission of electromagnetic radiation so all the other techniques uv visible spectroscopy infrared spectroscopy uv visible spectroscopy is useful for the identification of organic compounds infrared spectroscopy is useful in the confirmation of the functional groups and coming to the spin resonance spectroscopy we have uh spin resonance spectroscopy based on the spin of electrons that is called as the electron spin resonance spectroscopy esr it is highly useful in the confirmation of uh, our structural elucidation of the free radicals we have free radicals produced in our uh, uh, organic reactions and mechanisms so esr spectroscopy is useful in the in understanding the mechanism of free radical reactions and we have our uh, nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy which is based on the nuclear spin see the neutrons and protons they are all spin they are spinning and for based on the spinning of the neutron and proton or the nuclear particles we have a technique called as uh, nmr nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy in the nmr itself we are going to study about proton nmr spectroscopy as well as c13 nmr spectroscopy proton nmr spectroscopy and c13 nmr spectroscopy are highly useful in getting the information about the structure of the molecule so based on the informations that is obtained from various spectroscopic techniques along with mass spectroscopy spectrometry we are able to confirm the structure of organic molecules you see students who are aspiring to work in research and development of various private companies you should have a thorough knowledge on organic spectroscopy 
when you sit in a interview for the appointment of chemist in the r&d or quality control labs of private companies then they will ask questions from this topics only that is about organic spectroscopy only or spectroscopy in general whether it is fundamentals of spectroscopy in physical chemistry or uh, applications of spectroscopy in inorganic chemistry or organic chemistry the subject is interrelated and after coming to second msc if you concentrate more on this area then you will clear the examinations and also it will be highly helpful in getting a job in chemical industries so please listen the classes carefully and in the following classes i will explain the techniques one by one we will see the fine details of the techniques one by one thank you let us continue in the next class